Today I have a special announcement to make. I want to announce that the 560 SL wins the prize. Hands down, wins the prize for the most difficult car I've ever worked on to remove and jump the fuel pump relay to get the fuel pumps to run without the engine running. Now, you may say, Kent, why do you want to do that? You know, this morning I was on a forum because I've been looking at these forums. I'm thinking, man, people are really getting the wrong information. One guy says, well, why would you want to even jump your relay? Well, well, are you trying to drive it to the dealer to get it repaired? No. The reason you want to be able to run the fuel pumps without the engine running is to do fuel system diagnostics. So I decided to shoot a video on this with the 560SL. I've already done it on the 380SL. That was a little bit of a pain because I had to remove the glove box and reach in behind there and pull the relay out. But when we got into this 560SL here, we're going, oh my word, we have a whole new ball game here. In fact, I think last Friday we finally said, let's go home. I'm done. <laughs> this is not easy. Let me begin by telling you how we're going to access the fuel pump relay in a 560 SL. Okay, look at that. Three relays, all the same size, all located behind the glove box door and towards the center of the dash. You can't even see in there. So you gotta get your hand in there and you gotta start pulling these relays out and you're going, which one is it? Which relay? And you can't even get your hand in there. So these people were saying, well, gee, you know, I don't know how you're going to do it. What, 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 what should we do if you can't even get to the relay? And I said, you know what we should do? I told my sidekick, okay, let's check the factory service manual. When in doubt, always check the factory service manual. So I went and looked at the factory service manual, and they told me to get under the dash, pull this off, get right all alongside the fuse panel where all the relays are in the 560 SL, you start pulling panels, you start pulling glove boxes, you got stuff all over the place. And there's not even enough room to get your hand up in there. Look at the picture here. See where they're telling you to go to unplug this, to jump this pin and this pin, to get the fuel pump to run all the time. So sure enough, we pulled everything off. We got under there. We're trying to get our hand up there. There's all this wiring up in there and you can't even get to the plug. You can't even see the plug. So we said, okay, how in the world are we gonna do this anyway? I know some might say, well, Kent, why don't you just start the engine up and run the engine while you're doing your test? Well, there's a couple things I don't like about that. Number one is safety. You know, you're messing around with the fuel system up there with the engine running. The other thing is there are actually a couple tests you can't do with the engine running. You have to have the fuel pumps running but not the engine running to complete the test. There's a series of tests that you want to do anytime you go work on one of these KE Jetronic systems. And it requires fuel pumps running. So what am I doing back here by the trunk now? Well, I decided after looking at all the options, you got the option of pulling the relay, you got the option of trying to find that ridiculous XYZ connector <laughs> under the dash. I really believe that the best way is to go into the trunk, get a set of jumper leads like the ones I make here, and go directly from the battery to the fuel pumps. There's a couple things that I really like about this. Number one, you won't need to turn the key on. So you won't be activating anything electronically in the engine compartment. You will go in here, you will connect the battery directly to the two fuel pumps. And with this switch that I put on my test leads, I'll be able to turn the pumps on and off. Totally safe without activating anything else electronically in the car. Let me show you the wiring setup I made for the 560SL. This would apply to any of the twin pump KE Jetronic systems in the mid 80s up to the early 1990s. We have one long wire running through a switch. So this switch will allow me to turn the pumps on and off. And of course we've got alligator clips. Now this was originally designed to run one pump, like in the K-Jet systems in the 380SL. So what I had to do was put a, another alligator clip on this end so that I could power both pumps. So I'm going to go underneath the car, I'm going to disconnect the wires. I don't want any uh, 12 volt feedback back through the original wiring. So I will disconnect the two power leads 
to the pumps. They're not brown. Brown is ground, okay? It's, it's going to fool you because the black and red one is actually the power lead. We'll take those off. I will hook this to the positive of the battery. I will go under and hook these two alligator clips to the two positive inputs on the two fuel pumps and then hit the switch and the pumps will run. I know what some of you are thinking. Hey, Kent, that's a lot of work. Well, from my experiences, this is actually less work than pulling out the glove box and trying to yank that relay out from under the dash. You can see what I've done here. I've got the original wires disconnected on the plus side. I've got both alligator clips clipped. I had to jack the car up, not too high, just enough to get under here and work and put jack stands underneath it. You notice you do have to pull the plastic shroud off, but that's just held on with three 10 millimeter head sheet metal screws. That comes off quite quickly. And the wire goes from here to the switch and then goes right into the trunk and is connected to the positive lead of the battery. All right, I grabbed the switch and we'll just hit the on button. There you go. Now what's interesting is you could actually test both pumps, but you can put your hand up in here while you're running the pumps and make sure both of them are running. But see how slick that is? We can turn the pumps on and off without even worrying about the key position. So I hope you can understand what I was trying to say there. You could disconnect one, run one pump, and then run the other pump. You know, I did not build this long enough to get all the way up to the engine compartment. It just make the wires way too long. But it is long enough to come up here to the door handle on the passenger side and just stick this right in there like that. So I can turn it on, work on the engine, come back here and turn it off. You know, I have to admit that was a lot easier than I thought. Hooking the fuel pumps up directly from the battery was easier than going through the process of removing the glove box and pulling those relays out or removing the kick panel and trying to get to that suggested <laughs> X18 plug that the factory recommended. But look at this, now I've got fuel pressure on demand. I don't have to turn the key, I don't have to activate anything electrically inside the engine compartment, so this is great for safety, it really is. And now I'm ready to hook up my fuel pressure tester that you see here and go through the whole sequence of testing this KE Jetronic fuel system.